right. So Bryce is going to get a PRP injection of his knees bilaterally today. Um, this is actually gonna be his second injection. The first time we did it was maybe six, eight months ago. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, so kind of give your information yeah. about why we even did this in the beginning. Yeah, so I have dislocated both knees uh, multiple times and have arthritis in both knees and have just always sort of had knee injuries. I think the first time I injured my knee, I was in maybe like sixth grade, something like that. Uh, and then, so we had, you know, obviously talked about like the benefits of PRP and like what it could do. And so, yeah, it basically was sort of experimental that first time just to see what, what you it would, would get feel out of like it. and how I would feel afterward. And I work out about four or five days a week. So seeing if that would affect it, if it changed, and it, it did a lot. It was like most of the time, even like going upstairs, any kind of incline, my knees are pretty crunchy from the arthritis and have like low key pain more or less at all times. Um, and it was like a night and day difference of just like the smoothness and the in the reduction in swelling. Um, Tell yeah. me this. So we injected you mm -hmm. that day mm -hmm. and how long until you felt some relief and pain? Um, I noticed a difference on the table. Like wow. I think my legs were sort of hanging off the edge and even just like testing range of motion, I could tell it was smoother. Obviously there's a lot of liquid right. in there. So part of that is just like volume, I would assume. Uh, I worked out the next day and I could again tell like increased smoothness. Probably within like a couple of weeks though, I really started noticing that they felt strong and not just like smooth. Right. That I was like, oh, I'm doing things that you I would normally would. be like a lot more fearful about. They feel like really good, which is not something that I usually am to. constantly aware. Okay. And then, so since it has been, I think we're saying six to eight months. Six, I think it was like six. Six months. Like that, yeah. Okay. Have you noticed a decline? Like, Recently, were you going actually. back? Uh, yeah, I would say for the first like three months, it felt amazing. And then like the fourth and the fifth month, I felt pretty good. And then actually within the last like, a mm, couple of weeks maybe I've noticed it still feels smoother than it has in the past but more it sort of wiggles a side to side a little bit more okay um, but I would still say better than where it was before the injection okay perfect so we just drew his blood and what I'm gonna do is throw everything into the um, centrifuge and the centrifuge is going to separate his red blood cell from his plasma. Plasma, as I've said before on other videos, um, if you think about it like this, when you were a kid, you fell, you scraped your knee, and you had a little bit of yellow pus that formed. That yellow pus is basically your plasma. So that has all your stem cells, your growth factors, your healing properties, your scaffolding, um, really anti-inflammatory aspects to it. So then it formed a scab, and then that scab fell off and you had fresh new pink skin within 10 days. So the idea behind PRP is we're gonna inject it into an area of injury. We're creating this injury or, you know, as um, Bryce has, he has injury. And then he's going to allow, honestly with PRP, it could take anywhere from four to six weeks to actually see any change at all. Some patients have um, pain relief within that first 24, 48 hours. But I always tell you guys it's four to six weeks because that's how long it takes for tissue to change. And that's what we're doing is we're recreating tissue or, you know, building more um, like spongy fluid. That way you have kind of what he was saying where the mobility is a little bit more fluid. That's what we're looking for. So think of it as like brake pads, right? Your brake pads wear out, you go and you get new ones. Unfortunately, you can't do that here unless he gets a new knee. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing that <laughs> so no. we might as well just see what his body can do your body's amazing it can regenerate pretty much anything if given the right environment so that's the idea idea behind doing all of this so I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in the spinner mm -hmm. 
So what we're going to do um, is I'm gonna give him just a little bit of a lidocaine block. The reason why I'm giving him a lidocaine block is because I kind of have to use a, a bigger, longer needle when I'm going into a knee joint and I just don't want him to feel that needle. So um, I'm gonna just start with landmarks first. So bear with me a second as I get those. It's all about comfort. I just really want you guys to be comfortable. Okay, and it's about right in here that I'll be going. So I'm gonna make my little spot, wipe it with some alcohol. And it's just, again, it's just a little bleb. So this is a Botox needle, believe it or not. One, two, poke. And I'm just making sure that the skin around that area is numb before I go in with that big long needle. That's all that's for. Okay, same thing with this side. Just getting his landmarks. It really isn't any different than doing a cortisone injection, believe it or not. Um, it's the same landmarks, same type of injection. And back in my primary care days, I gave a lot of those. <laughs> okay, one, two, poke. Now something that we do a little bit different here at Novus, whenever we're doing any kind of PRP injections, whether it's shoulders, it's knees, it's uh, P shots, it's O shots, we like to use shockwave therapy. And the reason why we do shockwave therapy is because I'm creating injury to the tissue before I inject the PRP. So if you remember when I was drawing his blood, I was talking about your own PRP, platelet-rich plasma, will present itself in um, a case of injury. So remember you fell, you scraped your knee, you got a little yellow pus, and that's when the plasma comes in to start healing and repairing. So what I like to do is use shockwave as kind of like my injury before I actually inject the PRP. Um, shockwave, as you may or may not know based on our other videos, is going to help break up any scar tissue. Um, it brings more blood flow to that tissue and really kind of helps repair and regenerate by causing what I like to call microtrauma. So I'm creating microtrauma, sending blood, breaking up scar tissue, and then I'm gonna go in and inject the PRP, okay? So I'm gonna start with a little bit of ultrasound jelly. This is what we use for the conduction of the sound waves. And with the shockwave therapy, um, really you're avoiding bone. So it's more about just getting that tissue. And so I'm gonna go all the way around his knee All right, you ready, Bryce? I'm gonna start real low. One, two, three. You doing okay? Okay. And I'm just gonna go in a circle at first, just to kind of get you acclimated to what we're about to do. Right there. Next up is I'm just going to wipe the area with some betadine, okay, just to make sure I disinfect the skin. Because as you guys all know, our skin can take, uh, has bacteria all over it. So, we're gonna go one, two, three. We're just gonna slowly go in. Feel okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just gonna put some pressure. How did that feel? 
you're aware of it, yeah. but it doesn't hurt. It doesn't. Yeah. Do you feel pressure when I'm putting the fluid in? Yes. Okay, and that's it? Yeah. Okay. Um, did you feel the needle go in? No. Okay. Again, it just feels like I'm moving things around? Yeah, I'm like okay. hyper aware of my knees, I would say. So you definitely are aware there's something in there, but it's not a pain sensation. Okay. And then I just like to wipe off the betadine before I put the band-aid back on. <clears throat> and here we go. Okay. That knee is done. Mm. Yeah. Next up. Same idea. One, two, poke. And what I'm gonna do on this case is flush it all in. So what I like you to do with your legs is I'm gonna have you kick them back and forth. Let's just count 10 times. What do you feel when you're doing that? Any pain? movement, anything that we should know about. I mean, they do feel very smooth. Like yeah. That's like what I can always tell right away. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of liquid in them right now. Yeah. So I'm like aware of that, but okay. it's like... So you can feel that? Yeah. Okay. It's very lubricated. Perfect. Great. So um, from here on out, what I tell you guys is I want movement. So I want him to go out and I want him to exercise today. You know, if he was planning on taking a class or going hiking, I don't want you to limit yourself. Whatever you normally do is what I want you to continue to do. But I will say no ibuprofen, no aspirin, no anti-inflammatories, no alcohol. Because <laughs> remember, I want all these things to work. So if you're taking any kind of ibuprofen or anti-inflammatories, remember I'm creating inflammation. So I want inflammation, that way the body goes in and repairs what it's supposed to. So if you're taking anti-inflammatories, you're telling the body not to do what I want it to do. So that I should also make aware of you guys. If you are gonna do something like this, make sure that you hold off on taking any um, anti-inflammatories at least seven to 10 days before you come in to get the injections. And then what I say is, again, try to hold out another seven to 10 days the longer we can go, the better, of course, but um, just to kind of allow it to do what it needs to. Perfect. Okay, you. yeah, you're welcome. Uh -huh. <laughs>